Sorry. So it's a uh, can again. So we're going to do some more standing. So bring your arms up. So go through all of your principles, the ones we've worked on in the previous films, so the breathing, head as if suspended from above, pelvic area tilted forwards hanging down from that suspension from above. You just bring your arms up, so feet flat on the floor, about the same distance as your hips and your shoulders apart, and bring your arms up, uh, hands up to about shoulder height, palms facing down, fingers pointing in and ever so slightly forwards. Just standing. So in previous films we've been through this posture, we've been through this posture, now we're going to do this one. We're going to do two postures today. So this one. We have to imagine in this one, oh first, let's just uh, try, and, try and relax the, the body down. It can be hard uh, to come straight into standing and uh, it can be hard, it can take a while for your mind to settle down. So just feel yourself settling down. Breathing in, and breathing out, just feeling any unnecessary muscular effort, just feel it releasing. Trying to get into that tensegrity, tensegrity between the connective tissue and the bone. If you don't uh, understand the word tensegrity, you can you go, in, in, go and investigate, go and research bio -tensegrity. We're just standing, settling down. You can imagine you have a balloon in between your knees. You feel that balloon, you feel like that balloon is inflating, pushing your knees out, but you don't want to go out onto the outside of the feet. So you're dropping the inside of the feet down, or you're pushing that balloon in, but you don't want to push so hard that you pop the balloon. And do this with your mind, your intent. You're not tensing muscles to do this. Think it, think the balloon inflating you dropping or squeezing the knees in but relax the muscles you'd use to do that nice deep diaphragmic breath sink the ribs to fill the low back sink the chest to fill the upper back relax your shoulders your shoulders will will start to ache they usually ache when you're using far too much effort and it's it's a truth about uh, standing meditation or standing post, stick standing. But it's experiential. You learn what not to do. By going through the process of using far too much effort, you learn how to let go of unnecessary effort. So stick with it. It's the Goldilocks principle when it comes to standing post, standing meditation. Not too much, not too little. Just right. So tuck your chin in. Feel as if you're pushing your neck back to touch against the collar of your shirt. In previous films we worked on elastic or springs between the wrists and the back of the neck. Pulling the hands towards you. Pulling your head forwards. So pushing the hands forwards and the neck back. We've worked on springs between the wrists and your ankles, between your ring between your elbows and your knees. These are all to help you with your tensegrity. Your biotensegrity. You're going to feel that lifting inside the body. Feel all the joints in between the bones opening up. And don't use muscles to do this. Just think them, imagine them. Feel them all opening. And then you feel that fluid, that synovial fluid rushing into the joints. You feel the bones floating on that fluid. And you can imagine here that you are floating in water. You can imagine you're resting your hands onto a, a big board, a big long board, like a scaffolding board or a, a decking board. It's floating on the surface. You feel like you're pushing down on this board to lift yourself up out of the water. Pushing down this board to lift yourself up out of the water. So pushing up to the top of the head, pushing up from the the heels towards the toes and pushing up to the top of the head and pushing down on this board to push yourself up that lifting inside the body and feel yourself lowering yourself down into the water and picking this board up in the water not out of water, in the water lowering yourself down and lifting this board up in the water not out of the water, in the water and push down on this board 
push up to the top of the head. And really feel as if he's trying to lift yourself up onto this board and out of the water. And lowering yourself down. Lowering yourself down. Lift yourself up. This is uh, Moli. Moli is looking for strength there. Uh, not Shili. Shili is a lot faster. Shili is a uh, uh, try and feel. This is Moli. And the same Moli that small movement is superior to large movement and no movement is superior to, to small movement. Just pushing down. Pushing up to the top of the head. And lowering yourself down. So this move is it called? I think they call this move the, the shy dragon looks out of the water. Like a dragon peering above the waves and then ducking down below. Pushing down. And lifting up. Sinking down, lifting the board up. Pushing down, lifting this up. It's kind of like the feeling is this. But again, small movement superior to large movement, no movement superior to small movement. So the movement's getting smaller and smaller until they stop. They still have the intent of pushing down and lifting up and sinking down and lifting the board up. So pushing down, lifting yourself up, sinking down, lifting the board up. But relax all the muscles you do to do that. But still think it. As I've talked about in previous films, the nervous system not knowing the difference between imaginary and real. So the better you can imagine something, the more the nervous system will instruct the body into the positioning and the right muscular alignment to perform the task you're, you're imagining. You really imagine it. So even though you're not physically doing the movement, you're still sending all those sensory and motor neurons whizzing around the inside of the body. So there's stillness on the outside of the body, but there's a lot of movement happening inside the body. It's not physical movement, it's kind of electricity whizzing around the inside of your body. Your mind, your intent, sensory and motor neurons. Like you're looking, you can close your eyes here or feel like you're looking into the distance as if you're looking at a beautiful object way, way, way in the distance. And when your mind does wander away, as it will, from what you're trying to imagine here, trying to, to do, just tell yourself, no, I'm not thinking that now. Bring yourself back to this moment. And just pushing down to lift yourself up, lowering yourself down, and lifting the board up. Imagine them both happening at the same time. You're not physically doing it, so you can imagine them both at the same time. Move into that grey area. This is where the disbelief is. You can't do both of those things at the same time. You can imagine them at the same time. And you imagine them. Lots of things happen inside the body. Or well, not physically. But the, the body really starts to put itself into that biotensegrity, that really good positioning. This really strengthens your mind and your body connections. Okay, you can do this for about 10 minutes. Okay, and then let's just start to make some circles here with the arms. A circle here. Well, let's do them both at the same time. A circle. Well, you're a superstar DJ here. With really high up depths. And you're mixing both of the miracles at the same time. Feel this movement coming from the whole body. Sink the chest around the back. Sink down into the heels. Push down with your center, with the diaphragm, the pelvic floor. When you're pushing, turn tables around. More like you're moving something floating on the surface of water. It's something like you're resting on something floating on the water. Slightly pushing down, like you're pushing balls or balloons down, and you're rolling them around. One way, and the other way. And engaging the whole body. Arms at the side of the body, like you're carrying big heavy carpets underneath your arms. I'm not going to hold this one for very long, we're going to go into this one here, but 
imagine you're carrying a big heavy car but it's underneath your arms and the weight wants to pull you forward, backwards or to the side just imagine you've got barrels underneath your arm, barrels of water or barrels of beer or wine making sure the weight isn't pulling on your lower back it's not, well, you know, it's not pressing onto your knees it's not pulling the head forwards perfectly right, you can imagine you have springs from the soles of the feet to the top of the head and you're pushing up to the top of the head to lift these barrels up Really feel all the joints in between the bones opening up, filling with that fluid that lubricates the joints. Breathe in, looking into the distance as if looking at a beautiful object in the distance. And just bring the fingers forward ever so slightly, sitting down like you're sitting down onto a large rubber ball. And imagine now you're carrying a big heavy rock, a boulder in your arms against your chest and against your belly, like Asterix in those uh, Viking uh, comics. And again, this weight, the weight of this boulder, this rock wants to pull you forwards or push you backwards or take you to the side, so having to make sure you're perfectly upright. Make sure the weight is not pulling on your lower back, on your neck, or putting pressure onto your knees. You're distributing the weight of it through the whole body. Really use your imagination. Really imagine this rock. Again, the nervous system not knowing the difference between imagine and real, so the better you can imagine it, the better. The nervous system will instruct the body the positioning to perform this task that you are imagining. When you do notice your mind wandering away from what you're, what you're trying to uh, imagine, trying to do here, don't get annoyed with yourself or beat yourself up, just bring yourself back. Tell yourself, I'm not doing that, I'm not thinking whatever that random thought you were, you're following there. I'm not thinking that, you're, you're doing this. And this big heavy boulder. Perfectly upright. Perfectly balanced. I want you to imagine, so you can hold that one, that, that visualization, this imagining for as long as you like, to 10 minutes. We're going to move on to the next one. I want you to imagine now that you're in the sea again. Waist deep, no, shoulder deep, shoulder deep in the sea. And imagine you have your feet are flat on the sandy seabed. And imagine you have springs between your fingers and the seabed. At the same time, imagine you have spikes coming out of your fingers like Wolverine. Wolverine doesn't have spikes, not have his fingers, but imagine you have spikes going out through your fingers like Edward Scissorhands, for those who remember that Tim Burton film. And imagine a wave comes from in front of you trying to push you back, or feel a wave coming from front, in front of you pushing you backwards, so you go with this wave. You stretch the springs between your fingers and the ground, stretch the springs between the soles of the feet and the top of the head, pushing up to the top of the head, or Lengthen it up to the top of the head. Make sure the ribs aren't flaring out, the lower back isn't curving in. You can raise the toes off the floor ever so slightly. You don't have to. Don't feel the wave coming from behind you pushing you forward, so go with it. Compress the body forwards. Compress the springs from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. And compress these springs between your fingers and the, and the ground. Compress them against the ground. Compress and forwards. Feel the wave pushing you forwards. Feel the water rushing past you, trying to push you over. So you're having to support yourself with the whole body and these springs in the ground. Go away from, from in front of you, pushing you backwards to go with this wave, lengthen the springs between the, the fingers and the ground, from the soles of the feet to the top of the head again, make sure the ribs aren't flaring out, the lower back isn't curving in, you're not sticking your chest out, you're not locking up your legs. Feel the wave rushing past you, trying to push you over. You have to maintain this structure so you don't get pushed over. You feel it come from behind you and in front of you, going with these waves. Pressing. So again, this is moly, looking for strength. So in moly, small movement is superior to large movement, no movement is superior to small movement. So the movement is getting smaller and smaller. Keep all the imaginings. The movement getting smaller and smaller until it stops. But still keep those visualizations, those imaginings. The waves coming from in front of you and behind you, stretching the springs, stabbing the spikes into the ground. Imagine them all at the same time. You're not moving anymore, not externally. So you can imagine them both at the same time. Again, throw away that disbelief. You can't do both things at the same time. You can imagine them. You're not physically doing them. You can imagine all those things happening at the same time. Your nervous system. Sending all those signals out. Receiving those signals from the body. You're imagining these things. So it's receiving these sensory neurons from all your proprioceptors inside the joints inside the muscles signals on how your body's balanced in response to these things happening to it or 
what these things you're imagining happening to. He signals these sensory neurons going to the cerebellum, the base of the, the brain, the bottom of the brain. The cerebellum is in turn sending out motor neurons, telling their joints, the muscles to relax or tense to adjust. To maintain your balance and structure through all these things that you're imagining happening to your body. All these signals whizzing around the inside of the body, but you're you're actively relaxing all the muscles, the nervous system, the brain, telling to adjust, to fire, to relax. There's a lot of movement happening inside the body, and you're trying to still the body, the physical body, as much as you can. And maintain that focus when your mind wanders away, and it will. Keep telling yourself, it won't wander away, I can stay focused, then you are deluding yourself. You've got mind is a very slippery, slippery thing. Convince you that you're making great progress. And progress is thoughts of the future, thoughts of uh, achievement. That's not in the moment. You don't have those thoughts when you're truly in the moment. So when your mind does wander away, just keep bringing it back. Don't follow any of those random thoughts that the, the magpie mind wants to, the shiny thoughts that it wants to, to follow. Just focus on what's happening in this moment. Right here, right now. And all these imaginings, these springs, these waves. You can hold this for 10 minutes or so, or half an hour if you want to. I'm going to change now. So breathing in, raise your arms up. Breathing out, push them away from you. So we're going through all the postures we've worked on so far. So we have the one we've worked on today. This one we've worked on today. I've got the, uh, the push prop here. We worked on a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago. And we have the, the chain bar, the prop and hook. I'm going through all of them. Breathing in. And breathing out. Activate the whole body. So it's not just arms, it's whole body. It's putting everything together we've been working on. In that tense segregate of the body. Imagine all those springs between the wrists, the back of the neck, and the elbows and the knees, the wrists and the ankles, the balloon in between the knees, the spring in between the knees, springs from the soles of the feet to the top of the head. Find that balance, that tense segregate between them, all of these. Worked on those two triangles along the soles of the feet, or maybe two triangles of the feet. So the self moving between those two triangles. Breathing in and pushing away, rounding the back. So we had this uh, again a few weeks ago when we were dropping back and hitting the wall. Breathing in. Breathing in. And breathing out. In. Tracing your fingers around a big ball here. We did that in the previous film as well. Imagine we're pushing a big ball, a big stone ball away from us. Sort of letting go of muscular effort and feeling that tense segregate between the connective tissue and the bone. You no, know, we can't let go of all muscular effort. We can't stand up without muscular effort, but something to aim for. Letting go of muscular effort and just feeling the balance of the tense segregate between. Integrity between the bones and the white connective tissues of the body and the face. One way and the other way, breathing in and breathing out. So a nice grounding exercise, breathing in. And you're pushing that board down into the water or pushing the board down into the water. And breathing out. And your feet are sinking into the ground. Okay, so we can finish there. So give it a go, give it a practice, or don't. But make sure you are doing something. Uh, don't get sluggish, as I keep saying. When you slow down, when you slow down, when you get sluggish, your immune system slows down. So uh, don't get sluggish. <laughs> practice something. Don't just sit around watching TV all day. Practice something, and I will see you in the next one.